I feel like I've got a very um, high chair going on. I'm sitting up. I'm looking at the, the stream. Looking at <laughs> looking at my monitor. Going, yeah, king of the world right now. And I'm like, I'm, I'm barely. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know. Tall chairs. What a great intro. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the BNDAO stream today on this fine 4th of September 2023. I hope you are having a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week has been like I closed my eyes and it's been a week. Uh, I. It's just like, wow. Like it, I just blinked and it's all past. So... Uh, how about let's dive into today's game, and I'll let you know what I did. Here we go. Uh, this one's gonna be one where, unfortunately, the game's gonna start going, but I can't catch the very beginning, so we're gonna hope for the best. This is the sound. There's the sound. Here we are. We uh, shout out the Ubisoft logo at the beginning. This is... Rayman 2. You can't tell because it doesn't say Rayman 2 until you start the game. Actually, I don't even think it says it at all. But it says Sight Rayman 2. This is Rayman 2 The Great Escape uh, on the PC. Uh, if you want to run this game yourself, uh, you could be like me and somehow have a Steam version of it, or you could just buy it off GOG. Uh, remember, throw Digi Voodoo at it and you're good. Uh, but Rayman 2 is a game that I grew up with as a kid. It was one of those uh, games that my mum casually just picked up. I didn't know anything about Rayman. She just went, you know, the person at the store thought it was really good. Now, as a kid, I thought it was very neat as a game. Over my, <laughs> my late child, early teens, and especially when I was... 13, and I played, actually I was 14 at the time, I played a, a bunch of, um, you know, that, that's when I did all my old Let's Play stuff, and I had uh, uh, the PS2 version of the game, as well as this version, and I was very confused, I was like, ah, oh, there's all these weird differences, and I didn't like it, um, but the PS2 version, um, has a lot of differences, uh, yes, ultimately though, I think I kind of came out of that Let's Play maybe a bit negative, I thought the game was a bit more mixed, but over time, as I've thought of it more and more, how much did I love this game? How much did I remember it? How much did I really go, oh, you know what? Like, this game actually was onto something. It was really onto it. So let's dive into it. First thing, you gotta type a name by going up and down. We're gonna do BND. That's me, I guess. Uh, also, unlike my Let's Play from 13 years ago of the PS2 version, Let's get the goodies. Let's get the, the lums. Rayman, look what the pirates have done to our world. Uh, the, unlike the PS2 version, there's no voice acting, so you gotta fill in the blanks. A planet of anguish and pain, haunted by evil. A dark place, teeming with fierce monsters. <laughs> Nothing can stop them now that they've captured you. They've taken everything and reduced our people to slaves. What a what a dramatic intro as well. The robots search for innocent prey. In the chaos, they exploded the heart of the world. The thousand lums of energy which form it have been scattered. We are getting weak. Soon it will be too late. You must escape, Rayman. You are our only hope. Oh wow, that's the name of the game. Uh, but may I just say, how... There's the title. There you go. Oh, that's some bad... Uh... Edges of the texture, but sure, okay. This ga <laughs> The Buccaneer, the Pirate's Prison Ship Commander, the Admiral Razorbeard. Slaves now on board. Oh my gosh, it keeps counting up. I remember they actually read out that number as well. Um, Wake up, Rayman. I have sent you help. This is, this is probably Lee with the fairy voice. I love the textures in this game. Can I just say, like, not only are they decently high resolution, like, yeah, you can poke where the texture pick or the texels are lying, but in general, it's like, you got all these, like, very, you know, 
wacky angles going on with the the geometry you've got like door frames that are clearly not straight at all uh you got like yeah all these like walls where the the pipes just go up at weird angles um but then the uh yeah like the characters everything looks really good even at a proper like if you're running at the high resolution um, I'm not running at any, like, arbitrary resolution beyond that. Um, but yeah, no, I really love the look of this game. Uh, and yeah, over time, I just think this game's misunderstood. This game really is tremendously fun. And I think one thing that really made me appreciate it more and more is I really grew to love games where... Every level is some new adventure, every level is some new mechanic, and you're constantly toying around with new things all the time. This game is a prime, perfect example of that, and it's brimming with ideas, and I don't really think any of them are tremendously weak. So if you are listening through that cutscene, uh, or watching rather, uh... Rayman's been captured, Globox got captured, Globox had a silver lung, and that gave Rayman a bit of power, able to throw some punches. Let's get out of here. This intro sequence, unfortunately, you'll never be able to replay again unless you start the game again and sit through that cutscene. Um, but you can pick up some health. There you go. Tutorial. Game doesn't need to tell me anything, but it is going to tell me anyways. And here we are. The outside of the ship. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I don't know why the lighting is, like, <laughs> full bright for, for a second. Um, but yeah, we we fall out of the ship, crash land into the Woods of Light, the first level of the game. Uh, but we appear to be a bit separated from our, uh, our large blue companion. So we're going to need to look around a bit for him. Oh. But look who's come to see us. It's the guy. Hi, Rayman. Glad to see that you escaped. I'm Murphy, and I'm here to be your guide. You see that stone right next to us there? It's a magic stone which can read your thoughts. If you need some help, pass close to a stone, and I'll quickly appear in your mind to help you. If my advice sounds confusing, stay near the stone and keep F1 pressed. I will appear and repeat the instructions. Yeah, the PC controls, they make sense once you're using them, but they're definitely like, oh, okay. So, you use the arrow keys to walk around, uh, and then you use A to jump, space to attack. You're going to have control as a strafe button. You're going to sometimes use Z, I think, to go down, and then Q and W are your uh, camera controls, as well as numpad zero is your first person view. Uh, I worry that I've got, like... Things moving too fast because I've got my monitor refresh rate too high, but in general, I don't think any of them in the game runs poorly or runs weirdly, so I'm just gonna roll with it for the moment and someone's gonna tell me off later. Actually, you know what? Let's let's adjust the screen res right now while we're at it. So let's uh let's intermission. This is live live debugging. This is me making a big boo-boo and not setting the screen refresh rate before a stream. Well, granted, it is mildly the game's fault for <laughs> running at a weird refresh rate. Or is it me for... It's a bit of both. It's a bit of both. Okay, now we're just going to hope that the game actually acknowledges that and runs fine from here on out. Let's look at the, the sky. Nah, it's still moving fast. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. Uh, so, here we are, basically, this game is sort of a collectathon. Great, you have just smashed a pirate cage, destroy lots of them, they're full of energy. What's more, you see that bright sphere there? That's a yellow lump. Gather a lot of them, they'll give you access to secret places, and they'll teach you all the secrets of the world. Take the lump and hold down J down, you'll see. Uh, so, yeah, J lets you see how many uh, things you've got left in that level. There are 1,000 whole lums and 80 cages to pick up. 
Uh, but this game is not too long, so we'll probably nail this off in, uh, in two streams. Don't worry, nothing in this level actually hurts you. Uh, pretty much follow the steps, you'll get tutorials about the buttons you press. Uh, you will need to get all the lums in this level in order to continue, but that's enough of like, hey, you know, they're teaching you how to explore. They're also teaching you to make sure you don't ignore that there's lums over there, you know? Mm. Uh, so make sure you grab that one. Uh, other than that, lums are optional up until the point when you uh, try to go into uh, specific levels and there's a gate in the way telling you, hey, you didn't pick up enough lums. Nice job, bro. I'll point out uh, which ones those are. Well, you'll, you'll see the gate. You just don't know how many lums if you have them already. Where's Eddie? As I say, we were uh, separated and... Uh, Daddy Globox! What's this royalty free sound effect? I really want it on like a disc. I'll bring your dad back. You gotta find Lee. I, I'm very certain Lee is a fair bit further than that. But, <laughs> sure, okay, sure. Here's the last mechanic before we start getting into the actual, like, rest of the game. Thanks, Murphy. I bet you'd like to know how to climb. You see these two walls? Go stand between them and press A to jump, and A again to grab on. Repeat this maneuver until you've reached the very top. I guess that's one thing is that, like, you know, a bunch of these, like, 90s games, this is 1999 title, uh, so, uh, you know, it's got a lot of the, the learnings of how to handle 3D platformers and all that stuff from before, um, but it's, I don't know, I think it is peak, I think it is peak 90s platformer. It has all these cool mechanics and it manages to do it in a way that doesn't particularly rub off the wrong way. I think one thing that really helps this game is how, like, well telegraphed the levels mostly are. Uh, who's the king? Also, you're gonna get thrown off because... Whoa, English. Oh, yeah, I always do. Also, sometimes you gotta hit enter to continue with space, sorry. But... Yeah. We'll generally not have too many cutscenes going... Well, I don't know, actually. I think there's a, a, a decent amount of cutscenes. Uh, compared to the PS2 version, this game generally starts off the same. The pirates have taken Lee to the Fairy Glade, and they've locked her in one of the strongholds. To find out, you'll need to go through the Hall of Doors. The Hall is a magic place. It leads to many other worlds. Uh, this is the key departure. If you ever play the PS2 version, um, the PS2 version decides to add full hub worlds rather than just a map select, which is the Hall of Doors. Um, the Hall of Doors is represented differently in the Dreamcast version, but generally the Dreamcast version is mostly the same game, but it does have some differences here and there. Um, the Nintendo 64 version and the PC version are virtually identical, so if you got that one, cool. If you got the PS1 version, rip. Good luck, bro. Uh, let me just double check. Oh snap, we are running at 144 hertz. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll do the. I'll do this. I'll do a refresh for the 60 uh, hertz. There we go. Okay, someone's gonna really yell at me because I did. I did the refresh right wrong. So, another intermission. Sorry, bros. But don't worry. I'll be back and we'll get this kicking in in a moment. But yeah, no, I made I made a huge boo-boo because I started the game on the wrong refresh rate. And I know that it's not gonna like being on the wrong one forever. Alright, we're loading. DND, here we go. So into the fairy glade, the first level of the game. There we go. 
So, the Fairy Glade is um, a fairly straightforward level. Uh, we have uh, this water section over here, uh, just to start off, where we've got this water mechanic. You can swim around. And, uh, but yeah, you see, you saw how it was like hit A and Z to go up and down. Yeah, it's a, it's a little strange, but it, it, it makes more sense as I go along. Basically, yeah, so you're, you're always on a fixed horizontal plane. You just hit A and Z to go up and down. This is a swimming mechanic that I think is reused in, not reused, but like, I think uh, Zelda Majora's Mask. Uh, follows the exact same approach and uh it makes a lot of sense because well it depends on what kind of game you're doing but pointing around um hold on let's let's do a skybox test you see the sky isn't a absolutely like fanging it like it was before i do know that the frame rate is occasionally different depending on where i'm looking uh but that's okay uh, yeah, that, uh, I, I feel like different 3D platformers should have different levels of, you know, what's their water controls? Now you heard the swinging sound of a cage, but don't worry, swimming's not advice. Again, I love this texture, it's like, this is all you need to know, and there's so much, like, you know, flavor and style going on in this. jump up these ledges and we head up over over here again I, f I love the way that like this does feel like a larger 3d area um, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with this on this statement but uh, like I think the thing that I was a bit harsh on this game is that I wanted something more open world thinking that open world at the time was the way to go I think I was definitely feeling that in uh, in 2010, it's like, ah, oh, this is how games should be. Um, but ultimately, I feel like I want just something tightly crafted and, and loved. And I love how, you know, there's this door, you gotta find the switch, and you'll just explore, and you'll be like, oh, you, you know, I was climbing, I was jumping over deadly water with a piranha. Like, that kind of stuff just happens in one go, and that's it. We've got checkpoint lums, or the green ones. Again, here is just this lovely, large area, you know, it's great. I really should have done some, uh, some visual benchmarking, because I know it's running too fast at 144, but most of the game is generally, like, on point for the frame rate, but... Oh well, I'm not gonna get hung up over the frame rate. I'm just gonna be like, this is how the game presents if you've got a 60 hertz monitor. We'll just go with that. Um, I love this little side area as well, like the go to. Um, the longer levels are gonna feel like the, the yellow lums are a bit more petty, but virtually every level has 50 yellow lums. Different levels will be differently length. The Fairy Glade, this first level, is probably one of the longest. It might be the second longest that will do this stream. Because uh, most of the levels only consist of uh, two or three uh, scenes. I'm just going to call them scenes every time you hit a loading screen. I will say one thing, the loading times on that PS2 version were atrocious on my disc. It might be a European version thing, but... So... Well, now it's running at 60, who knows? Could have been a larger level thing. We got climbing, climbing on vines. There is no, you know, there's no question what a vine is. This is a way better texture than, you know, would you get on Nintendo 64? Actually, the textures in the PC version are much better than the Nintendo 64 version, so you might find that. Um, but yeah, the PS1 version is rather atrocious how, how it looks. Uh, and, and runs to some degree. Actually, it doesn't look terrible, but it does kind of run a bit shoddy, and it is missing a fair bit of content. 
Um, the other versions of the game, I believe there's a DS port, uh, which is sort of... Wait, I think it is very similar to the Nintendo 64 version, but it does run a little oddly. Uh, by the way, yes, this is the end of the scene. There is more stuff over there, but we will not experience any of it. I wonder if it's a V-Sync thing. Welcome to the Blendo stream. I adjust graphics settings every time we finish a level, apparently. Because, I don't know if it's picking up on on stream, but it's like it sometimes kicks in with 30 FPS, and it wasn't before. I might as well concede with the 144. Okay. Uh, in this scene, uh, we've got to head up. Well, you don't actually have to head around here, but this is where the secret -y area is. Um, there's lots of little fun secret areas, and I, again, the more I really kind of sit down and love this game, the more I actually appreciate the secrets. I guess the one thing that maybe irritated me as a kid was sometimes, and especially there'll be one level right at the end of the stream, uh, where I'll express a sentiment of, oh, I just wanted to get over with, like that kind of like stuff. But the more I kind of think about it, the more it's like, yeah, but I really did like, like I love the look and the, the feel of just this area here and, you know, like this whole part over here. I love how, you know, you can see this other cage chilling up there. That just means that, you know, th these levels feel a bit more connected and thought out, even if they are mostly, you know, a string together series of rooms. It's like, well, what does each room present to you? What's like this door? It's like, oh, you know, it's over here. It clearly presents itself as like that's you know, the fancy door. Yeah, I'll change the refresh right back. That <laughs> I feel like it is probably a dip, bit dipping for you fellas as well. Oh well. I don't think there was really anything other than the skybox, really, that was, uh, acting a bit weirdly for the frame rate, but, I don't know, presentation-wise, I kind of like the, the higher refresh rate. Look at that dithering going on up there. Uh, again, it's like, you know, oh, we're climbing on, on spider webs, and we fight this pirate, which we didn't even fight the pirate. We've got these little band-aid doors, I will eternally refer to them as band-aid doors, as well. Now, that now we're about to get into the other mechanic of the game. This game is a little bit of a beat-em-up. Careful, there are lots of pirates in the area. There's a good chance you'll have to fight one... I'll have to fight a couple, at least. To move around during combat, press control. This will allow you to keep your enemy targeted and make it easier to avoid the shots. Again, how do you do combat in a 3D game? And the answer is... You know, I want to be aiming straight towards the guy at all times. Why would I not? And that is exactly how they do it. You lock onto an enemy. And you just strafe around. There's no questions. There's nothing really wrong for constantly spamming the, the attack button. You know? That's how it works. So, uh, we've got this mechanic here. Again, it's just mechanic of a mechanic. This is a powder keg. You can uh, pick it up and you can throw it, which saves you from that fight, by the way, if you, if you realize that you can throw it at that guy. But uh, there's one actual secret you want to drop off with this. And that's, uh, if you go over here, we've got another little band-aid door, but this one... I assume it's planks of wood, but I always like to call it a band-aid door. This is that, that cage from earlier. It's got more lums. Uh, you're, you're seeing a counter, by the way, that pops up every time I open a cage. Basically, every time you get 10, your health bar increases. Keep that in mind, because 10... Actually... Actually, did the PS2 version do that? Or I think you had to cash in. I think the PS2 version, you had to cash in the cages. You didn't get the in increased health right away. Yeah, the PS2 version made a lot of changes. Maybe I deserve to give it a bit of a more mixed feeling, but sure. I love this part here, because I always get hit. Alright, we gotta fight one more. Actually, you don't even have to fight it. This is the other fun part about the game, is that... There's barely an actual need to fight the pirates. You'll definitely, you know... Want to clear them out sometimes. Sometimes there's a door or something triggered by... 
their life force? I don't know, they're robots, sure. Um, I love how it's completely unexplained that they're robots, but I like this idea of, you know, natural versus, uh, you know, artificial. The, the world living here versus uh, the artificial nature of machinery. So it's all about, you know, that <laughs> that environmental message. But I don't know, it's... it's it, there's, there's more to it. And actually, um, as you pick up lums... Oh, I... well... Yeah, yeah. If you, if you hold down F1, this is what, uh, Murphy was saying about, like, the lore. Um, as you collect more lums, you'll get more lore dumps. Uh, and I'll read through this whole thing at the end, because it's a very, like, curious bit of, like, bit of text. We'll just say that. Uh, there's a part you gotta throw the powder keg up, which naturally is the jump button, by the way. And then you throw it forward with the attack button. Again, it just comes naturally. They don't need to explain that you can throw the powder kegs up. You just gotta try your buttons. Which is something that I wish I did in the, uh, in the original Let's Play. I'm gonna keep referring back to that 2010 Let's Play. That, that thing gives me nightmares. And I don't know why the frame rate keeps, like, going a little faster, going a little slower. You think I would have tested this earlier? I sort of did, and then I thought it was all fine, and then I realized I had the testing parameters wrong three minutes into the stream. Oh well. Um, but again, like, I love the look of this machine. I love the, the that lightning. It's such a cool effect, and, you know, the smoke spam, and all the geometry of this stuff. It's like, it's all wacky and fancy and has this element of mysticism and the textures are so cool. I love this game. Oh my gosh. And the music is great. Yeah, yeah. Nearly every, you know, every level's got its own piece of music. Yes, you do. Yeah. Oh, you're we need to get rid of the pirates. We need all of the powers. broke the primordial energy core into a thousand lums, and combining the energy has become very difficult. But there may be another solution. Have you ever heard of Polokis? Uh, no. He's the spirit of the world. His power is immense. He could help you defeat the pirates. Unfortunately, he has been sleeping for many years. But there is a legend which says he could be awakened. If you reunite the four masks... The four masks? These masks are par pa magical and very powerful. Hey, I remember Tears of the Kingdom at the same plot, didn't it? It's our only hope. I'll help you by giving you all the energy I've gathered. Well, it's not exactly a purple lum, but, uh, sort of counts. There we go. Good luck, Rayman. Uh, for reference, that Rayman 2 site on the the main menu would just open up a web browser and open up Rayman2.com. Back when you could do simple domains like that. Uh, which does redirect to the Rayman Legends website, which is the latest Rayman game as of 2013. I guess Rayman technically appears in the uh, Mario vs. Rabbids Sparks of Hope DLC, but... We're finally on to the last scene of the level. Uh, this is the only level that you can't get all the things in on the first try. Actually, maybe it's two levels. But uh, there's this weird, like, element of backtracking that's just on, like, this level in particular. I love that sound, it's so good. And I love, again, I, the game needs you to have this, like, vertical camera angle. And without even, like, second-guessing, you know, they present it in such a cool way, you know? You're falling down, the camera's above you, the directions work. Now, with the increased power from, you know, from Lee, you actually deal double damage right now. Your shots are a lot larger in size, and that's just an indication they're more damaging than before.
I continue onwards. And uh, we have a mechanic that literally only appears here. Murphy's going to give us a tip though. On how to do it. You see these air currents, Rayman? Activate your helicopter in them and you'll fly. So, yeah. So, got to add some fun verticality to the, the game in some way. Uh, just hovering in here. Also, can I just say the hover is a brilliant mechanic. I know it's in the original Rayman. Um, which I have not played a ton of. Played a little bit, but not a, not a lot. Try playing the Math Adventures one on the PS1 and I wanted to gouge my eyes out because it's horrendously difficult. Seriously, it's like, it's like the levels are designed around math problems, but the proper like Rayman levels and they're so cruel at times. Uh, just make sure you pick up these yellow lums along the way. Uh, the goal for the end of this level, even though it's 50 out of 50, you can't get all the lums in this go. There's a couple in an area that you just cannot get to. You'll need to, um, it's not really backtracking in this game. If you miss stuff, you can play the level again, but... But yeah, like, the more I appreciate it, the more I, like, think about it, I go, yeah, no, like, it actually makes sense to, like, you know... Having to backtrack, you know, saves a bit of time. This game has a wonderful element of brevity as well, because I'm going to try and beat this in like two streams, and I know it's already been half an hour, and I'm only on the second level, but trust me, they get a bit quicker. They get a little bit quicker. <laughs> uh, I think there's a total of 21 levels in this game. That's two secret levels, and... Uh, There you go, a wonderful swing. Two secret levels and like 19 regular old levels. Really didn't make it, oh my gosh. There you go, free a teensy at the end of the level. So you're forced to basically get some cages at least. Um, and then yeah, you'll be directed to the end of the level. You do a dance. And into the, I used to always call it the egg yolk portal. Where you'll be told how well you did, or Rayman is very upset. You can only access the bonus level if you get all the lums and the cages. Uh, but you can re-enter a level that you've done it on and, you know, do the bonus level again. But uh, we'll, we'll do the bonus level in a moment. Again, sorry, fellas, but we're going to have to switch the screen res on, on you. Or the, the refresh rate. we got to get that speedy, speedy gameplay. I wish I had tested this earlier. Don't you just hate it when games like run at different refresh rates? Sorry, run differently depending on the refresh rate. That is a wonderful segue-ish to uh, me talking about the game of the moment, which is a game I am not playing, by the way. Uh, I just want to let people know. Um, the game decided to not pick the uh, full screen. Come on, game. Don't be shy. Good game. There we go. All right. Oh. We're just going in normally. We're just doing it. Marshals of Awakening. Here we go. Uh, but that game of the moment is Starfield. It is the brand new Bethesda RPG that I don't know like a crazy amount of. I definitely I watched the 15 minute presentation and people were crazy hyped. Also before I leave, just no. Uh, there's this area up here on the... Oh. You cannot swim at all in this infested water. We've done we've done a little bit of swimming already, but you gotta... There's only a couple of places you can do it in. If you head up here, you'll you'll get a, uh, a sneak peek as to something that we'll experience later in the stream. But for now, uh... You know, we can't, we can't view it just yet. Watch out for the ghost chickens, my favorite enemies in the game. We got a sign here. Warning, this is unknown territory. Tourism may be hazardous. Just 
bunch of eyeballs. No, you can't enter here. Only those who know the name of this place can pass. So shoot, come back when you know the name. So we can't go into the Cave of Bad Dreams because we canonically don't know that it's called the Cave of Bad Dreams. <laughs> But yeah, uh, the, the only real big reason why you want to just walk up here is because there was one lum there. And you're going to be like kicking yourself why you've got 49 lums at the end of the level. And it's purely because, yep, there's just one there. So, uh, this, le <laughs> this level is very straightforward though. And um, kind of reinforces this idea of, yeah, every level is its own thing. We had a very you know, usual platforming level filled with, you know, combat and climbing and a little bit of, a little bit of, you know, powder keg business. Uh, this level is very different. We'll, we'll let this, uh, character come up. How can I ever thank you all? Forget about that s s s s sand. You gotta, you gotta put the four S's in there. I forgot how good it feels to stretch out. Sensational. Tell me, do you know where to find the four masks of Pollocus? Sorry, Rayman, I don't know what you're talking about. But I did see Globox get captured by two pirates. They took him somewhere out beyond the marshes. If you like, I can help you get over to the other side. You can grab onto my scarf by shooting at it. Then press A to jump and control to speed up. Come on, let's go! What's the point of the Hall of Doors if you're technically still traversing across the world normally? Who knows, maybe it's a metaphysical space that's cataloging your progress. But yeah, oh, we got a jet ski pit! Jet ski level, everyone likes a good old jet ski level. Uh, there's a bunch of things you can miss, but fortunately you can just kill yourself. And uh, start again from the, the top. Uh, make sure you hit that switch, it spawns a few lums. You should be on 10 lums by the time you get around here. There's going to be three cages all around the outside, and each one will have five lums casually chilling in them. You do three laps around this uh, this tree, so make sure you get those. And if you're on 25 lums and four cages, you've done well. Otherwise, hit that box. You want to bail now. You can speedo. Speedo turbo. That's the end of the first scene. This level is only two scenes, so the levels... They're a bit quicker when, once you, like, know what you're doing. We've got these bombs dropping. But I, I love, like, all these different, like, set pieces going here. Like, the fact that you jump off. Oops. Just to get two lums like that, so... Yeah, but I mentioned Starfield, um... Because, yeah, it's the Bethesda RPG. I, I feel like there's a degree of... People haven't learned when it comes to Bethesda RPGs, but also, it's not—it's not a bad thing that people are playing it. I guess the difference is like the internet has a lot of different opinions, constantly clashing with each other. There's a lot of these five lummers, as I write in my notes, I wrote five lumma all the time. Oh, I'm glad I got that one first go and that one. Wow. Can I get this one as well? Sick! There's a cage at the end, so don't... Dang it. <laughs> uh, there's a cage at the end, so you'll hit the 50 lumps before you're done with the level. <laughs> don't worry. Um, but, uh, yeah. Like all Bethesda RPGs, so like The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and uh, Fallout 4, uh, it sort of comes out to a bit of a mixed appraisal. The critics are definitely pretty for it, but... Uh, the opinion once people actually play it is, hmm, what were they doing? Because these games take a long while to make, and then they come out and people are just like, hmm, there's bits that could definitely be better. But somehow people get super sucked up into the world. They love the story, or at least they love just like the, the actual role playing aspect. They love exploring around, figuring out quest lines that other people haven't really done. It's all very, um, I guess the term I would use is emergent. Basically, like, you know, this is this is a game, I'm playing a game right now where it's very linear. You're going to experience this, and you're going to experience this. It's full of great set-piece moments. But the one thing that a Bethesda RPG does that uh, I think we've certainly seen, there's been lots of games that have tried to emulate the success of Oblivion and 
definitely then tried to mirror it with uh, the very success of Skyrim, but ultimately at the end of the day, hey, first try, ultimately at the end of the day, uh, no one can recreate a Bethesda RPG. Rayman? So long. Come and see me again if you can. Hmm. I promise I will. Pl spoilers, he doesn't. <laughs> we don't see him again for the rest of the game. I think... In the... Yeah, actually, I'm remembering off the top of my head. The Cave of Bad Dreams in the PS2 version, they've moved the cave so it's actually at the end of the level. Which awkwardly means you have to... Like, once you, once you need to get to the Cave of Bad Dreams, you'll need to replay the whole level just to get to the Cave of Bad Dreams. Whereas in this version, it's right at the beginning, and you don't see Sam again, because you don't need to do the whole level. We're gonna do a bonus level! I'm gonna do every bonus level I come across, because I am sadistic. This pretty little fairy has gifts for Rayman. She's vibing, she's going. Uh, <laughs> people who have done this bonus game, oh boy. Help baby Globox get to her before the pirate does. Are you ready for this? To make him run, repeatedly press left and right one after... I assume that says the other, as fast as you can. Are ready for this? You're just gonna hear furious keyboard noises for the next 20 seconds. I hope you appreciate it. I used to be terrible at this as a kid, because it is still very aggressive keyboard mashing. But I'm getting pretty good at, like, having the, <laughs> the bar all the way up the top. But some of these start getting a bit longer. I think some of the longest ones are like 40 seconds, and it's like, man, you know, you gotta go. Bravo, you are really fast. Look what Rayman has won because of you. And, uh, yeah, your health bar, the current health, goes up by, like, half. It's, <laughs> I, I tried this earlier, I had, like, barely any health. It didn't even go up the whole way, so that's it. You can play it again if you want, you can keep trying to do it, but there's not really any point. There's really no point. We're on to the fourth level, the Bayou. Where we have a cutscene to start off. Meanwhile, the pirate prison ship slaves now on board lots more than before. That is a lot of people on one pirate ship as well. Very tremendous work. The logistics are amazing. In Razorbeard's private cabin, Yo, babe, oh, that yo, dear. Who does the door be? Your honor, bonus. He's made it into the swamp. What? You encompassed it in the sea lark. Send the warship and destroy him. He mustn't get his grubby hands on the farmers. I thought this was a shock moment as well, so. And yeah, that's that's right. Once we get into the level, you'll now see there's only 999 levels. Also, they sent that warship quick, bro. They didn't wait at all. But yeah, there's only 999 lums in this game now. Thanks for playing. Uh, head to the side at the beginning, and we're actually going to do a different level. Here you can win life force and power, and you have enough lums to go there. Uh, so this is actually a side level. If you've got 60 lums, you can enter... This, the Walk of Life. There are two The Walk of levels where you just follow Lee and uh, try to get to the end of the level within a time limit, as well as also picking up 50 lumps along the way, which you're going to need if uh, you want to, you know, get to the end of the game in, well, if you want to get the lore, how about that? That's what you're really doing this for. Now, one thing I want to really note is how wonderful the music loops are. This game has a wonderful element of dynamic music, where the music will kick in with different motifs and themes depending on just where you are. They've designed the level such that they'll have bits going, oh, they'll have just different different tunes playing depending on just the immediate surroundings. Uh, and it just casually kicks in with, you know, different parts of the song. There'll be a part later on, I always note this one, where you're doing these, like, long hovers, these long glides, uh, glides down a bit. This, this motif. Yeah, and it just kicks in when you head over to this room. If you wait, if you waited back there for another 15 seconds, that motif wasn't kicking in. 
And I think it really makes just, like, everything feel a bit special. Never mind that, how much of a, a decent vibe all the songs even are. But yeah, big props to uh, all the music. It's not that high a level, but it is just making sure that you're going along. And you can challenge your friends to that time limit. Uh, yeah. You know, get, get, a, get a good leaderboard time. But yeah, it's not too bad to get all 50 lums. He says wahoo. And yeah, if you get to the end uh, before the time runs out, well, there's your time. And uh, Lee will increase your health. Just cash. It's definitely worth doing, though. But you need 60... Well, you probably have 60 lumps by now. I know you can only have 103 up until that point. Now let's actually do this level. There's the, there's the ship. Let's, let's get in there. Let's continue in, so... Everyone likes a good old swamp level to start off the game, but I actually really like this one. Because it doesn't feel too much like a swamp level. It's got the music of a swamp level. How about that? Uh, unlike the, uh... Well, I don't know, the, the, the Masters of Awakening had five cages. This one's seven. They'll start to wind down the number of cages later in the game. I love the use of the motifs, it's so good though. Hit the switch and... Oh, come on, come on! There you are. The game really loves these, like, you know, breaking bridges mechanics. As well as also firing cannons and making you run forward a fair bit. Uh, yes, that cage did have a purple one, so... Uh, so the thing with Starfield, I guess, is that this game has a couple of very weird elements to it. It's... Uh, oh my gosh, the ghost chickens again. First of all, this game is really expensive in Australia. Like, tremendously expensive. We're under the, you know, the impression of, okay, a Switch game usually launches for 80 Australian dollars. That's been the standard right now. A Switch game, mind you. Some of them launch for 90. The average AAA game has been releasing at 90 Australian dollars for quite a while. Um, and I know I've talked about the price increases. We started getting some games starting to push $100. Uh, we've had, and I know we had $105 games during the PS3 era. I know that. Um, but that was also when our currency was as bad as it is now. Funny how it do be like that again. Um, Suddenly, well, yeah, recently games have been starting to push $105, $110, $115, and Starfield is $120 Australian dollars, which costs about as much as, like, eight meals. Uh, that, that one cage on the underside of the bridge is definitely a doozy. Uh, again, this level's only two scenes, so it's not too long. But it's a good number of, like, set pieces going on with it. I love how the music's picked up now. It's, it's jamming, it's vibing, it's going. And then you're interrupted by these, uh, I'm very tempted to call them space pirates. I love how different pirates as well have different amounts of health, will fire at you in different ways, and... Sometimes we'll have different involve periods, like that guy had barely any. Again, I love this, like, mistiness. I love this fog at the bottom. I love how, like, I'm not paying too much attention to how JPEG that wall is. And it's clearly a wall, but still, I just love the look. Like, who built this, you know? I, I want to know who they are. Just all these kegs and very wonky angles all over the place. Comes together in this wonderful look. But you know one thing that I think also makes a lot of sense? Like, one, I'm playing this game on a keyboard. Usually I'm like, oh, you know, I want to play with a controller. And generally I still do like the comfiness of sitting down with a controller. There's a switch here, which 
increases this into this uh, wonderful, uh, just, just, I want to note this, this wonderful tree with fire coming out of his eyes. What a incredible sight. That is, that is cool. Uh, watch out though, we got a guy. You gotta bait him over the side and he'll fall down. Can I just say, like, this part of the music suddenly. It's not got the high bit, but it's like, oh, the momentum is still there. And then you get inside and then this guitar kicks in. love this music so much. I'll, I, I, I'm just gonna gush over the music. It's more genius the more I think about it. I think back then, as a as a naive 14 year old, uh, I didn't have as much appreciation for like music as I, I definitely do now. So every time, like, I mean, there was a, the motif was coming back in there for a moment, you know. Oh, look at that. I got it all. Things he starts bouncing up these, uh... Oh, well, not really, he just jumps in from underneath, apparently. But that's our level. Nice and quaint, nice and cool. But I enjoy it. Into the egg yolk. And away we go. How oh, very fun. Let's do another bonus level. The instructions are the same, but the path may be different. They all look the same. Who knows? Here we go. Uh, but yeah, 120 bucks. Uh, not only that, you've got to pay $170 in order to get the deluxe version. And unfortunately, the game has technically not come out yet. It comes out Wednesday, I think, here? But people who bought that special edition have gotten a five-day head start when it comes to playing the game. They're able to play the game right now. I, basically, I know what's going to happen. So get the health increase and sure. Uh, the Sanctuary of Water and Ice. Now, these Sanctuary levels are generally your, like, barriers for, like, what's the... Um, you know, what's the... Uh, the world, I guess? You know, you know I'd be like, oh, this is level 1-1 one, one and 1-2. One, I usually treat the Sanctuaries as, like, the end of the world. Because there's a boss at the end of them as well. A little more organized. Okay, sure. Uh, but yeah, this uh, this is indeed a check. You need to have collected 100 lums in order to enter this uh, level, which it sounds like a bit, but it's also like, oh, you can kind of get 200 by now. Um, so if you if you haven't picked up enough purely off the the, the Marshes of Awakening, uh, just try and get more on the Walk of Life, and you should be set for this one. Um, I've actually done, I should also note as well, I've done like a casual speedrun of this game. I've not like RTA timed it. Actually, I think I have RTA timed it, but I haven't like streamed me doing it. Uh, not a hundred percent run, but enough to get through the game. Because you need, I think, 550 lums by like close to the final level. I love the shot of the hands and opening, getting in here. This level has one of my favorite pieces of music that just happens for like 30 seconds. Also, don't forget that that cage. There's two cages in this level and it's just right there at the beginning. How many cages we got total? 21? 21! This guy is a pain. Uh, because he just drills into the ground and he probably takes like what? How many hits is that going to be? Six? I'll fight him for prosperity, but... Again, you, you don't have to fight anyone in this game, really. These crabs are annoying, because yeah, you saw he takes off, like, this tiny little sliver of your health. I love when the music is, like, ready to start. It's ready to get somewhere. And then once you're done... Well, the tempo's still there. It's anticipating something. Gets a little quieter as you head underwater. Check it out, there's a big five llama right there. As well as also a couple more llamas as you head down. Ah, 
as we breathe over here. Look at that. That's the other, the other chest, the other cage. So it's weird, I don't know, it's weird. Like, the more I, like, think about this game, it's like, no, it is, like, very well paced and it's like, again, we're only 55 minutes into the stream, and that's with me, you know, adjusting my, you know, monitor settings, like, three times. Alright, make sure at 23? Yeah, 23 once you get over here. We've got this lovely outdoor bit with this majestic door right here. There's the music kicking in again with a bit of the, the pirate. Now I love this as well. Just this one like baseline. Once you pick up the powder keg. Oh sorry, not the powder keg. Not the powder keg. The um the we've got those two like pedestals in there. Once you pick up one of these orbs. And it's it's only when you pick up these orbs. This baseline. I know it's on the piano. But it's like, oh, it's such a groove, it's such a vibe. Purely, like, it, I think what makes this bit... I'm at a loss of words, let me just say. Carrying these orbs is a sluggish, you know, Procedure. You're gonna have to do it a couple of times in the game. But, uh, this intro part is definitely the most sluggish of all the times because what is there to threaten you right now? Nothing, really. It's just teaching you that, you, you know, there's gonna be these times when you have to take two orbs and put them on these, uh, colored pyramids. Also, I believe we can look at this sign. Free dumping for anyone who can figure out how to open the door. Very nice. Um, oh, I feel bad, like, interrupting this music. Because you're not going to hear it after I go out of this area. It's it's just completely gone. I'm trying to pick the cord. I, I, I'll listen back to it. And here we are, the wonderful door opens up. I'm getting a very Atlantis vibe, but it's probably just because it's the water sanctuary. Uh, don't be the kind of guy who walks forward, you want to get all these lums. There's like 11 of them, right here. You'd be at 40 lums, you don't want to miss all those, they're easy lums. Walk in and apparently you go into space, but really, we're gonna get a sliding tutorial. Uh, we've technically been sliding before at times, but it's pretty straightforward. Other than, yes, there's no helicopter. So you gotta commit. But I love this, like, you know, mystical, like, kind of spacey vibe going on. Uh, I'm gonna try my best to get these lums. You've got 45 by now. I'm gonna have to do another big right turn. <laughs> I'd love these, like, sliding passages in the game, though. There's gonna be three lums as we do this magnificent jump here. Oh, oh I missed one. Well. Into the void. You know one thing as well, like, this game does that I just think is crazy revolutionary and I'm amazed, you know, a game in 1999 gets it so right? Do you know what happens when your health bar runs out? The game just goes... And we might we might experience this, but I, I, I'm probably gonna be, you know, fine. The game just goes, try again, and then you start the map again. In like three seconds. No prompt, no extra like, you know, oh, you wanna continue? Like, no arcade stuff, it's just like... That health bar is your health bar, and if you run out of health, you gotta start the scene again. Not the whole level as well, just the scene. Just from the last loading prompt. Welcome to the first boss. This is Axel, the guardian of the sanctuary of water and ice. He's a very challenging boss. You've got to use the purple lums to go up. Yep. 
Make sure you wait on this one a bit because he's not quite underneath the thing yet. Go up and hit that and the ice falls on him and he's dead already. That was a real tough boss. I hope you guys, you know, I put blood, sweat and tears into beating that guy. Yeah, the bosses in this game are kind of weird. That's my only- that's- okay, listen, if I'm gonna pull some gripes, yeah, I'd love something a bit more imaginative. There's some incredible, like, boss fights and stuff in the third game. The third game is a very different beast, though. Just like the first game is a very different beast. And yeah, there's one lum just above the end- the exit, just at the end, so... I mean, you know, you know it's mystical when there's just a pedestal in a giant, like, kind of coliseum rooms. You just ascend right into the center. Always mystical, so. Uh, so let me, so let me go through more Starfield things I find annoying. Um, the, <laughs> as someone who hasn't bought it, I know, I know. Um, but like, yeah, to me, 170 bucks is a lot just to get that entry price. I know you can say, oh, but, you know. That's just early access, it's not really out. The, the problem is, I think a lot of people have bought into, you know, doing that price, and then, hey, there's no reviews. You can't review the game, because it's not out yet. You can't, well, I know you can talk about it and make YouTube videos and stuff. But what I mean is that it just kind of circumvents, like, the Steam review system, or many other review systems, because suddenly it's like, hey, people are reviewing this early. There must be something up. Um, the... Performance is not quite amazing. There seems to be a huge problem of it being very RAM speed dependent. Uh, so that's a big rip if you're on a DDR4 based system. Maybe that's something they'll address. Um, I think that people sort of have issues with the kind of plasticky look that a lot of humans have. Also, people look weird at times, or lots of the time, depending on who you ask. Uh, they might hate that the space travel is very, um, superficial. It's effectively more like a fast travel than proper space travel, like... Many people forget that Elite Dangerous is a game. Um... Elite Dangerous has its issues, but it's also like, yeah... There's games that do, indeed, get space travel right. I don't know why people are waiting for Bethesda to do that. This guy has peak male physique, by the way, right there. I want to be exactly like Pollock is here. So we sort of awoken him or not? He's, he's talking in dreams, so... Okay. You, you, you want it. Here we go. Oh, I'm missing the key. I'm missing the key. And he tripped at the beginning, but... I'm not too sure how many seconds of leeway you get. I'm probably gonna be cutting it fine. He's gone a different, different pathway. I like how you get the occasional second to breathe as well. Oh, no. Do I have it? Or am I going- Oh, I do have it. No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Yes, wow. Okay. I feel like I probably wasted like three seconds at the beginning there, but sure. We're doing okay. Welcome to the next level, the Many Hills. Uh, so when I said there are... The... <laughs> the Fairy Glade is... The Fairy Glade? Yeah. Is, uh... The only level where you have to backtrack. This level, technically, you have to backtrack as well. Uh, but you immediately backtrack. We'll get into that in, like, five minutes. Also, these walking shells are simultaneously a core memory and the bane of my existence. Uh, but before we deal with the walking shell, uh, did you realize that there's actually, like, a switch just back here? And there's casual- oh, no, 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 we're not, we're not dealing with you yet. Between these three things, I used to call these, like, I don't know, they look like those grains from that Bugs Life game. Just hop down here, and would you look at that, that's a cage! It's got a five llama. There's eight cages in this level. Like, there's a, there's a lot of just stuff you're gonna get from cages. These things are a very interesting mechanic, and... I swear these things showed up more in the game, but... They surprisingly... Well, I guess maybe that's like four times. Which is more than you'd expect. 
more than a lot of other mechanics. Aim at that door. Yeah, I get it. Bravo, you figured out how to ride the shell. Press space to go faster, press A to get off. But you can't get off if it's going too fast. Keep that in mind. Because that was one thing that I remember having, uh, Military Academy, please respect the need for total silence in the cadet's concentration. For the cadet's concentration, okay. Alright, you're gonna need, you're gonna need a, actually I don't think you have to take it out. I think they wake up anyways. But there's a wonderful door here. Don't go the other way. You want to go, you want to go this way just for a cage. 15 lumps, three cages. That's in this first scene. Let's get into the second scene now. Uh... But yeah, keep that in mind, the, uh, press A to jump, because, uh, I remember in 2010, I, I thought that, like, you know, in order to make it big as a, as a Let's Play, you had to sort of have, like, freak out moments. So I swear I over, I overacted. I, <laughs> there were, there were times I specifically remember, um, once we get to the next sanctuary and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this game is the worst, I'm, I'm crying, I'm having a terrible time. And there were a few games where I would express that, but honestly these days I'm just like, man, you know, why? One, because this game is genius, and I was an idiot child. And also because, do you really need to cry over a video game like that? I don't know. Now we ride the shell. One thing I love about these shells is they uh, weirdly stick to the ground, they keep going down. And there's going to be some levels later on where I'll, I'll just kind of toy around. I'll be like, yeah, like, I'm doing all this cool stuff. There's a path to the left. Why go that way? You don't have to go that way at all. There's a lump on the right path. Uh, I think 31 is the correct number. Once you pass about this point, uh, a magical door opens behind you. You could use the shell to open it up, but if you miss, there's a powder keg. But I love this magical wall, may I just note, from right where we came from. And you can you can adjust the camera in just the right way, such that you can you can definitely tell that is a completely thin wall. There is nothing There is no thickness to that wall. Um yeah, it's a very quaint, curious wall. We'll just say that. Uh, there's definitely some bugs with Starfield, uh, people are still upset you can't kill certain characters, um... But generally, I think the gunplay is good, and that's actually, like, hey, you know, better start nailing that. Uh, that is a mechanic they haven't exactly taught yet, the, uh, holding the powder keg next to the, uh, open flame. Uh, so... I don't think you can really ride it out, and if you could, that's incredible, but I don't think you can. So, Elite Troop Training Center, danger! Five, five cages? Yeah, that's right. Uh, that is the last one that you can get before. Uh, before the game will throw us out of this level. Um, I don't want to eternally rip into Starfield, because there's bound to be a lot of things that people do enjoy out of it, but definitely a lot of just, like, quirk. People were hyped for a game that ultimately was exactly what I expected, which is, there's going to be enjoyment to, ha to be had, but there's also bugginess. There's, uh, ambition that's clearly not there. There's, um, a bit of overprice in, in this case, because we got, like, $120. Clark, so it was you who wiped out all these pirates. Only 20 pirates against you? They didn't stand a chance. Hey, you don't look good. So good even. Are you hurt? I must have swallowed something bad for me. To get better, I need some life potion. It's hidden near the entrance of the Marshes of Awakening in a place called the Cave of Bad Dreams. Don't forget that name or else the guard won't let you pass. Cave of Bad Dreams? I won't forget. Hang in there. I'll go to the Marshes and get the elixir. And then, yeah, the level just, like, bails. If, if you were enjoying collecting stuff, yeah, the level is, uh, just done here. So, we need to now wander back through our map screen. I guess this was much more annoying in the, um, in the PS2 version, because you had hub worlds, you had to just run all the way back.
and you had to do this level again, basically. But don't worry, it's literally just here. And we've also already done this level in its entirety, so you don't have to even worry about, like, having to finish the level. So, I guess, like, this is the only backtracking that's even required in the game. It just kind of happens, you know? I can read your mind. You know that I'm at this place. You are now ready to enter the camp of bad dreams. But before you come in, I must tell you something. I've hidden a precious treasure inside. You can keep it for yourself. If you beat me to it, I'll give you a head start. But don't waste any time. If I catch you, I'll show you no mercy. Whoa! I like to think he's just sucked Rayman's soul, and this, his soul is literally just him, as well. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Cave of Bad Dreams, otherwise known as Me Nightmares Child Scary Scary level. I got very spooked by this level, mostly because I didn't know how to deal with, uh, skulls, uh, ghost things, weird vine stuff on the floor, and whatever the heck the wall texture is. It's all texture as well. Although, I used to be a baby as a kid. I used to get scared by the portal in the background here of the poor screen, like... Like, I, there, there was, there's better things that I, like, could have, you know, been scared of, and, uh... Computer textures is apparently the thing. So... I was gonna say this level's pretty linear. Oh, this also would terrify me. Don't, don't touch, don't touch the arms. Don't touch them. See, Rayman's got magic, but me? I don't have magic. I'd be screwed if that arm thing touched me, you know? I used to always panic over these, uh, I call them bone pillars. Maybe they're also made out of bone and not just have bone as a wall texture. But I like how there's no, like, second guessing, like, what is something you can climb up as well in this game. It's great. Uh, so yeah, I don't really want to rip on Starfield too much, but it is just like a culmination of things that make me wonder why there's insane hype when literally every problem people describe, I'm like, didn't we all say this with Fallout 4? And suddenly, oh, now it will be different. They've spent more time on it, which makes me also go, what were they spending time on if the end product is kind of like this? Look at these little Mike Wazowski eyes going on. Hopping around. That's what you, That's the problem with having no legs. Uh, we got a bit of a battle royale moment. We gotta fight all of them. Or at least four of them. I love this music as well. Once you got 11 lums. Well, doesn't matter how many lums you have, but make sure you got 11. One of them will spit out one of these. You can drop down here. It's technically not a changed scene. There's a lum behind you as well. Note that. I used to think this uh, this door looked like Pleakley from Lilo and Stitch. Am I the only one who thinks that? I also hate these, like, whack rattlesnake things. The sound. It's very visceral. It gets to me. Again, core memory. Uh, but yeah, I think the thing that really just kind of gets me about Starfield is, I guess, like, it's got a very disproportionate, like, um, fan base and reception. Maybe some of it is like, okay, it's the kind of circles that I, you know, look at on the internet, but sometimes it's like, yeah, it's, it is very loud. Like, a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm going to play Starfield because it's, um, you know, because it's like, I, I want the brand new big space game, and then, or big Bethesda RPG, and then like... I don't know. Maybe there is something great about the story or the mechanics, but... I've never, it's never truly clicked with me. Not in Skyrim, not in Oblivion, not in Morrowind, not in Fallout 3, uh, not in New Vegas, and I know New Vegas is technically developed by Obsidian. And I know people are gonna yell at me because, oh, how dare I not like Obsidian? And how dare I not like New Vegas? It's a perfect game. And I'm like, no, it's not. Have you seen how those skills come together? It's a bit of a mess. 
Like, I, I, I'm gonna- I'll rip into it a bit. It's enjoyable, but I can never call any of those games truly amazing to me. They're always just, like, fun and a bit long, and they've got some neat storytelling in places, but... I don't know, to me... Doesn't exactly... You know... I don't know, I, I, I'm finding it hard to put, put the words to the thoughts, but... It's- it's fine. It's just- it, like, it's just a ranking thing. If I had to just rank, what's my, like, you know, my Desert Island video game? A game that, like, various games that I would only, you know, I- these are the only games that exist now. It's the Rapture. They're the only games that exist anymore. I wouldn't put any of those Bethesda RPGs on there, because they don't have that staying power for me. And I know some people are gonna go like, oh, like, why wouldn't you put the super long RPGs on the list of games that you'd play over and over again? And me, knowing full well I really enjoy Breath of the Wild, my problem with Breath of the Wild is I can't play it twice. But Rayman 2, I can certainly play again and again. Maybe, you know, you might make the argument of, yeah, but your overall play time, is that gonna be as long? Are you gonna get bored of Rayman 2? Perhaps. Metro Prime's on my list, though. I'll never get bored of that one. Um... I have one of the Guitar Heroes as well, that one's gotta be for me. I'm trying to think, what's another, like, Desert Island game? Gran Turismo 4, which I get to cheat because that one's super long, but that's that's also just because there's a, baju a bajillion content. It's just infinite content, it just never ends. As someone who's done the entire retro achievement set for Gran Turismo 4, it never ends. I like how I hit the wrong button. I, that's what I love as well. You throw this thing the wrong way, it just reappears right where you are. There's just so much, like, lovely thought of, like, oh, you know, like, what if you goof up things? And the level design makes sense. It's like, oh, they're requiring you to, like, pull these orbs back, but, you know, you see the pyramids. You know where they've got to get to. And both of these pathways make sense. I don't know. I like, I just like the way that this is all laid out. It feels very natural. It feels like, you know, they've, they've told me everything they need me to do. I'm just constantly figuring new things out and doing it in different contexts and things like that. It's cool. Just before you go into the pit, make sure you grab more money, more lummies. Now, this part, again, if Kidme was already scared, Kidme is now terrified because... <laughs> One, he just comes out of the ground. Your trip ends here. Eh? He starts sliding and he just... You just get that POV shot, which technically doesn't cover the edges of the screen. Even in 4x3, it doesn't quite work. But yeah, if if you if you get too close, he chumps on you. Which is absolutely terrifying. So there are th three... Uh five llamas along this pathway. I think the first one is just after this jump. Oh, there you go. The only thing is you can spot a little bit of the black where it's textures, but there's like, like underneath the, uh, uh, kind of center top, so top, uh, kind of center the right tooth. You'll see that black bit and you'll, you'll never unsee it now. But I love how, again, it's like, okay, player knows how to do slides, so we're just gonna throw a slide bit here. They technically don't announce it's like a boss, but this is basically a boss fight. This part might annoy kids as well, who think that they need to punch, punch, and constantly mash a button for a boss fight. What you gotta do here is you gotta wait for these uh, skulls to come close, Hit him with a hit, and I'll stay put. Don't let a second skull bonk your first skull. Or a skull that you're on, or else it'll fall down. Also, it falls down and or disappears after a bit of time. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure if, like, uh, I have, like, a bit of a love-hate with the long games. There are definitely long games. Again, I mentioned Breath of the Wild. I loved Breath of the Wild on a first playthrough, but I find that games on multiple playthroughs you know, like, I can't exactly play Breath of the Wild twice. I've sort of experienced everything. I can definitely play through it again, and I have, uh, on the, the Master difficulty, and I'm like, yep, yeah, that is... 
definitely not how the game is meant to be played. Um, but I guess, like, I don't know, we're sort of in this, like, world where games need to have tremendously long playtimes. There needs to be, like, so much content, whether the content is, like, uh, I will, what's, like, what's one, for example, like, Sonic Adventure is a great example, where it's like, there is not a crazy amount of content in Sonic Adventure, but they get you to do a lot. They get you to just do the right, uh, do the level. Now do the level and hold 50 rings at the end. Now do the level in this time. It's like, what is different about any of this? Knuckles levels be like, ah, yes, time limit. Oh my gosh, I didn't, I hit A just like three frames late. This fight's always the worst when you do take your time though. Fight, air quotes, you know what I mean. And yes, that last bit of five lums is just right there, so. This is true horror though, I'll tell you that. I'll just do this jump now. There you go. Uh, yeah. I don't want to also, like, I don't want to rip into people who are... Oh, I don't want to rip into anyone who is enjoying Starfield. Because if you are, you know, power to you. And I guess it's like me personally. I just don't want to engage in $120 at all. Uh, and then, yeah, just in general, like, I've, I've not had the best track record. Um bugs and the crashes you know you can you can figure them out you can figure out like oh you know a crash in one spot okay what do I do to not suffer from that again I guess but yeah I don't know the the weird experiences and I've never had like great times with them you know it's a game that I had a decent like a relatively decent time with and I remember a bit more I enjoyed uh, the outer worlds a fair bit I just played it on the Xbox Game Pass. I had no, like, um, you know, commitment, no monetary, like, you know, how much value did I get out of the game? I just played it, and I enjoyed it for what it was, and that was it. I feel like if I really enjoyed New Vegas, I'd probably be like, oh, you know, it, you know, I hate how linear it is. I hate how handholdy it is. I hate how the, the, like, um, well, I don't, personally, but it's like, oh, Ooh, ooh. Like, there's a lot of things. I guess the Outer Worlds, it's like, it's a bit too simplified and streamlined, but to me, I'm also like, it made, you know, the cat, the party characters I was bringing along, it made it feel more worthwhile because they, um, you know, they were constantly interacting with things in, uh, the places I was going to, and, and they'd say things, and they'd make notes about, things that happened before. Here we are, by the way, the treasure room. Yes! <laughs> Do the Scrooge thing where you, like, dive into it and then break your neck because it's just a pile of solid gold. I'll let you know, this game is super ahead of its time because... Like lots of games after it, although I do know those games before. I know Clock Tower. Clock Tower. Clock Tower exists. My treasure is yours. Take whatever you want. Uh, Clock Tower is definitely a game that popularized multiple endings. Uh, this game, you can just press, I want the treasure. And, uh, casually. He's had the big cheese, the game's over. That's it. That's a speedrun category that's basically hitting this ending of the game. <laughs> it's the bad ending percent, but I love, I just love that like... Man, if only Rayman had a... Starfield on his desert island, you know? Ah, oh, it's such a, such a great like, fake out. And, and, and I feel like there are games like, I think Batman Arkham City does the exact same kind of fake out as well. And yet Rayman 2 gets no love for doing doing that. So no, you you're meant to turn down turn down the treasure. The level exits. And uh, Rayman sort of comes to his senses. 
You made the right decision. You deserve this. Here. This is the elixir of life, guided preciously. And, uh, there we go. Uh, the elixir of life appears in the pause screen. Um, but yeah, now all we gotta do is wander back and awkwardly do the first half of the many hills again. I do think that's a little weird that you gotta do, like, that part of the level again. But again, the levels aren't too long. So, it's not the worst. Uh, yeah. I guess at the end of the day, you know, even if you love or hate a game, I guess, you know, like, it's fine. It doesn't really matter what exactly you, you love or hate. Um, just as long as one, hopefully you're not being exploited. Don't be sold on Todd Howard Promises. Just buy the game if you, you know, you want to play it. And don't get suckered into playing the game. I, I hate it, you gotta watch this cutscene again. There's a cheat code that allows you to skip the cutscenes. But I worry I'm gonna accidentally skip a cutscene, so I'm just going raw. I'm going raw on this one. Um... Yeah, don't get pressure into playing games just because your friends are playing as well. I always note that one. Um... And, uh... Generally, AAA games, performance is gonna be a bit all over the place. Uh, if there's one thing, I guess it doesn't rely on high VRAM? It requires fast, you know, system memory. It doesn't necessarily need, uh... You know, 16 gigabytes of VRAM on your graphics card that only four graphics cards, uh, consumer graphics cards really satisfy. This first scene is a lot shorter when you don't fight the enemies and you don't go into the side that uh, counts as well. And we don't have to go up there because, again, you know, we've got all the stuff. We're basically just beelining straight to... straight to Clark. Look at this little red scarf Rayman has as well. What a fun design, by the way. This is a floating hands and legs. I wonder why they exactly did that. Maybe it was just because, like, it's like Vector Man. It's just super easy to, like, draw in sprite format. And it sort of translates into 3D decently as well. Because now it's like, oh, no, you don't need to animate joints. Well, you animate the joints. You don't need, you don't need to, like, figure out how a joint looks. Because it's, it's just phantom. It just exists in space. Okay, let's see if this guy won't... Nope, he's gonna wake up. I hope you appreciate that mip map draw distance going on there as well. <laughs> uh, the problem is with running games at particularly at 4K, but you can spot that at 1080p. Why aren't more like movie trailers in 4K? I love the slide. Hey, Clark, here's the elixir. That's not a buddy. Woohoo! Oh my gosh, he's, he's up. No, I could go crush a whole bunch more pirates. And his, his eyes went a little, little hypno for a moment. There's actually, you can spot the exit down there if you want to exit the level now. There are no lums, or there's actually some red lums down there, I think. Uh, but you don't have to go down there again, so. So now, we're continuing the level, and finally, going to see what's at the end of the Minnow Hills. And that's right, a bit of a sequence where you help Clark... Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> bit of a sequence where you help Clark get out, as well as another cage. Why not? More cage is always good. Uh, so I spent this past week... Uh, upgrading my my server particularly I got a bunch of like faster networking so now I have two and a half gig from my computer going to it and it is 10 gig so more things can connect to it without you know than just me you know bottlenecking the whole thing faster connection down uh, at least to the other end of my house and then I'm not getting bottlenecked when stuff tries to access the internet because you know I'm at the other end of my house I don't want the you know, the slow connections. Well, sorry, I don't want to saturate the gigabit link to the other side of the apartment. Oop. When I'm trying to just connect to the, you know, 
to the mast or something like that. Look at all these like extra like cages all over the place. So you should have 44 lums and uh, eight cages by now. Now let's try and get this guy. There'll be six lums just along the path to the end. It's a very brief ending as well. Like this level isn't like crazy much longer after you know helping Clark out there. Uh, lean left twice. With two lums, it's just easy to get both when you go left. You can't jump here, by the way. I just want to note that. I'm pressing A. It's doing this animation. I love this cutscene as well. I feel like there's like a... Like some kind of a... Uh, you know, old adventure serial. It's got a very similar, like, sequence to this. Maybe not jumping off a cliff. But it's such a, it's such a cool way to end it, so... And there we go! Let's do another bonus level. Let's do it! Mash those buttons! Here we go! For reference, when I was hitting, uh, or rather missing left and right, at, uh, at the last secret level, it's because I've got a, um, a Keychron K4. And so most of the keys on that bottom row feel the same. I don't have any notches on them. If I was using a standard keyboard, it'd be kind of weird that I'm missing the, the arrow keys like that. I didn't exactly lose much time last time though, so... Okay. I think that was the exact same... There's only so many of these anyway, so... Here we are, the canopy! Finally, it's a level with three se actually the, the, um, the many hills had three scenes as well, didn't it? Do you like spiders? You're gonna love, uh, big spiders, they're gonna occasionally show up. Uh, I love how, you know, you could fight the spider or you could just ignore him. Except then he's gonna jump on here and absolutely terrorize you while you're trying to pick up these lums. I told you, this game is terrifying. This game would terrify me as a kid, so... Uh, but yeah, so I've... The, uh... This is an exclusive sneak peek for the people who watch my videos. Watch the streams, watch the VODs, like that kind of stuff. Um, I'm making a video basically showing how I built it. Uh, it's not gonna be like... Well... No, yeah, it is gonna be in-depth. It is gonna like... You know... I want to show, like, just everything I did. What were the decisions? What was the, like, the reasons? Oh, this is going to be awkward, because the spider's going to be coming the other way. Oh, no, he jumps behind me. Or did he? No, yeah, he jumped behind me. Make sure you got one cage and 18 lums. Because, yeah, you could fight the spider with, like, how many eyes on top. Do this jump, and the spider, uh, well, <laughs> he tried. Except he gets back up in it anyway, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the end of the scene. That's, it's just there, that one scene. <laughs> uh, you might recognize, actually, I don't know if he's, no, you might not recognize it because he's literally not been in any of the rest of this, uh, game so far. Come on, come on, there we go. Imprisoned here is public enemy number two as Rain Dance led to the rusting of several brave robo pirate comrades. This is what I love as well, is that like... He's a bit of a scaredy cat, he's a bit of a dunce. But he appreciates your help and... He's actually a bit of a secret weapon. I love it. No one is truly worthless in the Rayman universe. So stand near these laser doors. Laser, oh, I guess it's just laser, and you will know, just summon some rain, and it seems that everything in this level, you know, can be solved with a little bit of water. Uh, this lum, very careful, make sure you jump for it, because you'll, you'll walk off that ledge and you'll miss it, and then you'll be very upset. You can sort of sneak out over here before hitting the checkpoint though, so don't worry there. There's another cheeky lum just around here as well. Love this music again! I'm not 
that. It just, oh, it's great. Come on, come on, come on. Are you, are you gonna do the plant? I'm looking at the plant. Alright, make sure you do a jump for this lum. There you go. Away we go, so... Uh, but yeah! Uh, as, a, as a spoiler on the uh, on the NAS, uh, I bought eight drives for it, and uh, two of the drives are a bit dead on arrival, so... That is sort of gonna be... Uh, Part of the conclusion of the video, but everything else sort of worked. Um, just like the switches, and and I, I got like, uh, like I wasn't really sure it was all going to come together, but it sort of did in the end. So that was nice. Um, the drives are like the last thing, and it doesn't really matter what drives I use. It's just the ones that I did get. Uh, only six out of eight worked, which is very disappointing. Um, one of them would report like. Or both of them will report smart issues. One of them would just not list anything. And the other one would, uh... Like, start spitting out, like, bajillions of errors. Uh... I thought it was kind of weird, because, I, I mean, I'm plugging in eight drives, and I have a SATA expansion card, so I thought, oh, maybe I only plugged in two in the correct SATA ports, and then the other two I had in the ports that were disabled by having more M.2s. But no, no, I had it right. Um... And, uh, yeah, no, it was just, just reorder the drives. Nope. Same, same serial is not reporting right. The serial reports? I don't know why all the drives also had eight times less capacity in the BIOS. Just interesting stuff. So, I'll explain more in the video. Uh, I've filmed it. I've got a script written to read out and narrate, but I've also still got to do the editing and some music under the hood. So yeah, so, uh, Glowbox has another silver lum there, uh, also, yep, the scene is over. That is the hardest lum. I wrote down, try to miss this one. The <laughs> Rayman is automatically walking up from that scene and he's just gonna pick up that lum. This, this just sent the whole pirate ship after me, I guess. Oh, that's the, that's the scout. That's the same scout. So, now you have the ability to charge up a, a, a punch. You just hold down space. You will stand still. But, uh, if you, if you have your lock on, then you'll just start doing your strafe, your usual business. Uh, a charge shot is super powerful. It's definitely, like, I think this guy takes, like, nine hits if you don't charge anything. So the amount of, like, downtime of him being, you know, you know after a hit, he's in vuln. Uh, using the charge shots just saves you a bunch of time. Thank you, scaredy glow box. We're good. We're good. You're gonna need him, because <laughs> lasers, my biggest weakness. You think Rayman could just, like, dive through the middle? Like, just throw his head through, throw his arm through, like that kind of stuff? Oh well, so... Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll throw that video up independently of any, you know, existing release schedule. Uh, it's done when it's done. I'm not sure if it'll be ready this week. But I hope to get it done sooner than later. Um, so I'm gonna try my best to do all that work. Uh, I think Glowbox is still being scared around the corner, whoops. There we go. He'll follow you. For having a companion, it's actually not even that annoying in this level as well. Because he's just gonna, you know, generally go through the level. He's not like pathfinding around corners, he's got a set path. Uh, lots of lums up here. So if you go over here, it's like doors closed. It's like, oh, okay, it's illegal. I'm not allowed to stand here. But public enemy number two is allowed to walk past, though. But look at this thing. And it's this weird flower grow, which you can jump into and shuffle about. Try to go through the door, and it's like... 
Identification underway. Everything okay. It sets a big nose to put. Door inactivated. And then you're just allowed to jump out and go. The teensy and the portal is right here. Also, that teensy had two lums on him. Just magically here. Now that glow box, we're just gonna leave you. See ya. Uh, but yeah. Uh, filming this thing was new for me, because I'm not particularly used to, like, you know, using a camera. Uh, I have a very shaky hand, so I've tried to use, like, the stabilization feature on my phone. But it also sort of comes out, like, super zoom, so I've tried my best, I hope you guys appreciate it, but... I'm hoping that just the content, the, the, the things I say, the way I built it, I hope that all comes across as like a fun little learning exercise, what to do, what to not do. Uh, for example, like I bought right angle SATA cables, and this is a uh, just a scenario where you shouldn't be using right angle cables. It works, the cables are cables, but they ain't, they ain't what you should have been getting. There's a very specific use case for right angle cables, and... Um, that is, when it's up against a case door, not when it's up against the rest of your cables. Or the bottom of, uh, of, of the case, so. Yeah, lots of stuff there. Uh, this guy, just toy around the corner. He's got no involve period, but when he, like, does that zap, it's not fun if you get hit by that. You just charge a shot, wait around the corner. These guys are effectively bosses in the, uh, in the, uh, PS2 version. I haven't been talking about the PS2 version very much anymore. Mostly because I've forgotten a lot of it. I like how you can jump into this little fish tank as well. Uh, Whale Bay is a cool level, although, uh, much shorter than I remembered as well. For reference as well, I wrote down notes similar to how I did the Empress New Groove game. Um, because effectively it's... Sort of the same deal. You go through a level, you need to make sure you pick up things. You can get some red lums over there, if you want. I like how they've got the piranha sign. You know. Massive pit. Oh, I guess there technically is piranhas at the bottom. There's definitely piranhas here. This part's fun, where you're trying to get these lums and suddenly it's like, PIRANHA! <laughs> they jump up at you as well. They're not even, like, centered on the lums. They're just literally coming at you. Also, me saying coming, I, I don't know, it just remind me of Smash Mouth. I'm like, man, the timing is super awkward. Because the, uh, the singer guy is, like, basically, uh, in the critical state, we'll just say. And, uh, it ain't looking good, so. My heart's out. We'll say that, but, yeah. Oh, well. You know, don't be sad that it's gone, be happy that it happened. Okay, that's the attitude I usually go with. And I'm glad that we lived through uh, all the Smash Mouth memes, as well as also actually having Smash Mouth. I've... <laughs> Is it sacrilege if I say, I, you know, I listen to Astro Lounge and it's like, well... It's not exactly my kind of album, but I do dig, like, just, you hear singles on their own. It's a singles band. I like how I just didn't care about that one guy as well. Also, you can bounce off the powder kegs. I guess these are more barrels than powder kegs. There's a pirate over here. I think we might have to fight him. I love how, yeah, once they give you the charge shot, it's like, yeah, you know, take out these pirates, bro. You can do it. And this game, I think I've sort of described it. In, like, to myself, but depending on how many pirates there are, this game's sort of, sort of, like a shoot 'em up if you know what I mean. It's not, it's not really a shoot 'em up but it's like, are there elements taken from that? The shots are so slow and all dodgeable, and then you're yourself firing shots, you know? There's something kind of, like, incredible about, like, how seamless and how little I thought about it, but it's like, no, like, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. This game is actually, like, crazy smart with how it works. I love this level because I enjoy me a good, deep water level. 
Hey, Rayman, Carmen, the whale is trapped. The pirates want to use her blubber to oil the engines of their prison boat. Go help her, fast, before it's too late. So, <laughs> despite this giant, you know, swath of ocean, there's actually nothing to explore there. But Carmen's just chilling there. Instead, you've got to go through this tiny hole to get the treasure that's on the other side. And the treasure is uh, Carmen's freedom, I guess. Follow the path a little bit, and you'll come across this cheeky triangle. We'll look back at it in 15 seconds, but flick the switch, and you did it! To breath! They were missing an E. The translation was doing so well. What's up, Dragoy? How's it going? How's it going? Uh... This is one where you gotta boost. Don't jump, it's a boost. Then you can jump off. So far, so good. Nice, nice. I'm gushing about how wonderful Rayman 2 is, as well as also talking about uh, how sore my back is after a PC build. Uh, for reference, that is all the lums in this, uh, in this, like, scene, by the way. They're, it's just the two there on the path and then the ten in that cage. You gotta follow the, the whale for its, um, cough cough air bubbles. I'm very certain whales produce way more methane than I ever will in my life. Someone look this up. If you're an expert in, uh, whale flatulence, please tell me. My number is 1-800-BLENDER. Thanks. <laughs> Just following him, you know. Picking up the air bubbles. We're gonna have to do this awkward bit where Rayman is trying to swim directly in that point and there's a wall in the way and he struggles to actually get there. He gets there in the end. And then he stops because I think there's just a certain amount of time he's supposed to be trying to swim there, but sure. Um... We're nearly there. The piranhas are coming to take my air bubbles! This is a, um, a really, like, interesting part here. Uh, because... I feel like the PS2 version's probably thrown more lums uh, all over the place. Maybe in parts that are a bit more important to find, like, secret areas. Um, although they do expand some of the levels as well a little bit. Uh, but this is one where, again... I'm actually amazed there aren't more lums in the water. But it sort of makes sense because... The lums are in secret areas, they're not in corners. And that's like a very big difference between a game like this and a game like Donkey Kong 64, which came out the same year. It's like, they don't want you scouting all the corners of the map. They want you finding all the cool, like, areas. All the cool pathways. Which I think is actually pretty neat. I, I like how this is like, crash ship here. Uh, but you'll see that there's actually this little secret over here. Now this secret is super important because when you go through it, you know, like what kind of thing are you imagining on the other side, you know, like a, a couple lums, uh, maybe a cage, no, this is even better, okay, we've got like a pedestal here, you go up, it's a trampoline, there's like three lums, three red lums, it's, it's actually like nothing worthwhile over here. I think there may be something over there in the PS2 version, but when I'm talking about how cool this game is and, you know, rewarding you and finding all the secrets, yeah, this little hidey hole is not one of them for some reason. And there's nothing really else around here, but I love... Again, I would sleep here if it wasn't, like, underwater and I can't breathe. You know what's a cool, like, superpower? I always keep talking about, like, like, what is, like, the superpower of choice? Uh, the one is, uh, me not drowning in the next five seconds. Okay, we're cool. We're good. Oh, this is this outside area. It's a crash ship that was connected to a crash ship as well. So, uh, you just need to walk around to the front. You can either walk up the... the mast itself, or just... You know, climb up here. Now, you know that there's super... Indicating this one right here. A cage, lots of lums in here. But I don't know. I th I think I feel like it'd be kind of cool if it's like you know you could breathe underwater. 
or just like not breathe at all and like still live you know what I mean like all the places you can go that other people can't go that's pretty cool you may be thinking uh, didn't they say you can't uh, helicopter while sliding and the answer is yeah I think jump down here and uh, watch out we got one of these guys Same procedure, just bait him off. All good. Um, yeah, oh, my back hurts from doing the build, so don't don't blow up my back, or do it when you're young. I'm pretty sure the TC sort of jumps through the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of an awkward jump. I get it, so. That's all the goodies in this level. And in we go. Whale Bay. Okay, time for another secret level or a bonus level. Time to mash left and right again. I think this is a different, <laughs> a different level. Maybe. No, I don't think it is. I'm just doing it for fun. Why not? You get the bonus level. You know, destroy your keyboard while you do it. Someone's gonna be like, Ah, yes, you're getting better. The answer is maybe. I, I guess, maybe. Uh, we're gonna do one last level, except this is the level. The Sanctuary of Stone and Fire is the level. Uh, so, another lum check. You need 300 lums in order to get into this level. I've picked up 453. So it's a bit of a squeeze. It's a bit of like, yeah, you gotta pick up a fair bit in order to get in here. Um... I think you only need 550, yeah, for the, for the last check, but there's also not as many levels uh, after this one as before, so ready to discover a new world. Yes, Rayman did just appear there, he, he wasn't quite off screen. The game is secretly designed for like one by one monitors. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm super happy about the build, uh, apart from the dead drives, but the dead drives are easy to deal with because the functionality is there. Just use fewer drives and then put in more drives later. Um, for reference, I'm using TrueNAS and I'm using a, uh, a mirrored... Uh, I don't know what's the, the terminology. I'm using, like, two three-drive pools. Or am I doing three two-drive pools right now? It should be like one mirror total, so effectively halving my capacity. Uh, and that's nice because then it's like, oh, when I need to upgrade the total capacity, I'll bring one of the mirrors down. I love the, the, the projectiles this guy fires, it's so cool. Uh, but yeah, the, this level, by the way, this is the notorious one. I, like, I remember shunning the heck out of this level. And then it's just like me, like, as an adult, understanding this level. It's like, no, this level is actually genius, and I just don't know what I'm talking about. For example, uh, there's a, there's a cage right there. There's a cage right there. How do you get it? We'll get back to it. Don't worry. But this, this level is genius, because it's a culmination of all the smart, like, design choices. Okay? So, no. Hole in the wall there. Keep that in mind. Uh, there was a lum back down there. Uh, you know? You can, you can even see, there's a, there's a tunnel back there. You know, stuff like that. But okay, so you hit the patch, then you're looking backwards. You know? Okay, sure. You swing on this, uh, it didn't render the, the thing, but sure. Uh, we've got this, I don't know what this is called, so I like calling it the, uh, the power glove, because it's so bad. Um, but no, it's actually pretty cool. It's effectively, every time you swing your fist, it's like a fully charged shot. You've got three uh, fist icons in the top left. But it just means that uh, every time you take a hit, you lose one of those, and once you lose all three, the power glove is gone. Uh, it's only in a few set moments of the game, but savior it while you can. Also, yes, you do lose it when you touch lava, which kind of makes it a bit precarious, and I'm probably going to lose it just casually otherwise. Again, pathway over there, okay? This level's genius, because as you progress through this level, you know, keep your eyes peeled. Okay, how do I get over there? 
you know, okay, bit of a weird jump. Suddenly, plum, you shoot it, it starts bouncing. I'm gonna jump on it. And wouldn't you know, you're standing on it. Now, the plum, you point it in the opposite direction. So right now I'm like holding down to point towards the camera. And you throw your fist. And yeah, you, you start riding the plum. What a very cool mechanic. Okay, but hang on. Now I'm on the lava. I can go, like, the reason why I'm going backwards. You know, you put two and two together. You realize that, ah, okay, I can navigate the level this way. They've got more, more ways of using this as well, other than... That's the snake thing. There he is. We've got a plum over here. Let's grab the plum. This guy, what you gotta do is stand uh, sort of here. Oops. Okay. Whoops. He's not gonna be baited off the cliff like uh, he was in previous levels. Instead, you've gotta do something a little bit trickier, a little bit smarter. Throw the plum, and he'll, uh, stuck on his head. And he'll just wander over and act like a platform. These plums are actually platforms. So you can get this chest that's just... If I say chess, I mean cage. I'm trying to think, what game did I play recently where it was chests, not cages? Uh, the plums, just like powder cakes, you can throw them up, and throwing them up makes it a bit easier to jump on them. But also, oh no, it pops immediately. This isn't regular lava, this is death lava. There's very, very red lava, and then there's uh, this lava. So, no, two different lavas, okay? Note that one. This game is teaching you all of its mechanics like, just, just visually. They're happening. You might not realize that they're happening, but they're definitely happening. Okay. Put your, put your investigative uh, cap on because uh, there was so, oh, also they respawned. Very nice, very nice. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna write this a bit further up because there were parts that you were like, okay, so there was a hole in the wall. What's that hole in the wall? What did that mean? Keep following. Keep following the pathway. And you'll eventually, you know, circle around to the hole in the wall. That's pretty cool. Because that lum was there. And you know you're not going to pass a lum, right? Okay. So we're going to keep going back, keep going back, keep going back. And then we get the lum. Also, I love that that's just a pathway. But then, hold on, what's that weird miscoloration over there? Miscolor? Discolor? I think it's discolor. So you follow along. It's not even the tunnel yet, it's just the bridge. But it gets you thinking about it, and then you go, ah, look at that. A tunnel. And you go in here, okay, checkpoint. Plum goes there, sure, okay, let's, let's get this plum. And let's slam it. Good job, Rayman. Good job. Let's slam it onto this post. Now it acts as a platform. The procedure still continues here, just a little different. You throw it, it'll land on the post, and then it'll drop. You can see the shadow shaking. It'll drop. So you throw it again. And this is all a secret area as well, by the way. I just want to note, like, you could have just continued on the level like that. But I feel like this game, you know, the... I gotta serve the justice of, like, showing that there's all these cool things. And that chest, the very, very first thing we saw, that's where it was. As well as also, that's half of the cages in the game, so. But it's a super out of the way secret, but it's a very fun one. A very cool one. If you've never, by the way, if you've ne if you've played this game and you've never 100%ed it, I highly urge, try and scout out those secrets. Try and find all the cool secrets, because... They're super re rewarding. They all feel great. Um, and I just want to note as well, like, a cage as a reward. You're constantly increasing your max health pool. So, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna note, uh, well, well, you know, there, there's this sequence which I'll get into in a couple of minutes. Um, and I'll note that, like, in, yeah, in that 13-year-old Let's Play, like, legit, I looked up. Some of those were uploaded like October 2010. Ugh, ages ago. Um, I was like absolutely berating that passage. 
and I'm like, in hindsight, I'm like, I'm, I was an idiot as a kid. I was actually stupid, because it, the genius is right there, I just missed it completely. And then unfortunately, you get kind of sort of stuck into, you know, not knowing what you're doing, but I don't know. Is it my fault that I missed the stuff, or is it the game's fault for not constantly having a way to remind me? So, so jump up on the spider web. The one singular lum. I think that actually is like the last. Is that the last lum I have written down? Uh, it is the last lum I have written down before the, the the map transition. These black snake things just coming out of the walls like, uh, <laughs> very spooky, very very spooky. I love how there's a spider web there, but. You can't exactly get on it, so you gotta use the plum for that last bit. There we go. I always think this is weird. It looks like it's a scene transition, but we didn't hit a loading screen. We didn't. Also, hi. I was readjusting my seat. Thank you. Now I had to lose one of my things. You've guessed how to climb onto the plum and move by shooting in the opposite direction. If you want to grab it, stand in front of it. You can throw it in the air, just press A, or throw it in front of you, just press space. The plum lets you move on lava as well as water, and why not stick one on a post? When it's far away, shoot it to make it move. Don't hesitate to use it against your enemies. He basically tells you everything that you sort of, you know, <laughs> had to use in the secret areas. Um, so yeah. Uh, this sign would legit tell you that there's actually something up there in the PS2 version, but in this one, it's just a sign telling you there's two ways. The left path is the optional path. They added an optional path to this level. I think they poured their heart and soul into making this level feel very special. Uh, and it's certainly unique, but it's certainly long and large. So, here we go. Up here, I think I refer to this in my head as a pyramid, but it's not exactly a pyramid, more than a, a tomb, a catacomb, I don't know, something like that. Uh, so welcome to the optional scene, uh, where we're basically in Tomb Raider. We are in some kind of pyramid, lots of triangular things spitting out fire at us. But again, oh, the music, the music is on point. It's great. There's a cage immediately there. Try not to miss that one, that one's pretty pretty nice and easy. You got these walls that you just gotta shoot open and they break. I love that like, you know, we're just about at like two hours and I love just the variety of all of these areas we've been to. We've been to a swamp, we've been to a forest, we've been to like, uh, uh an aquarium. Get these band-aids off temple, uh, uh, like, ice palace, a beach, uh, um, you know, these kind of mountains, all of these, like, cool different locations, just in two hours, and there's another two hours full of even more stuff later in the game. It all sort of flows naturally as well, like, you never feel exactly that, like, you know, one world has led into the next, it's more just, you're constantly, you know, going between scenes, between environments. Yeah, the more I think about it, it's like, yeah, like, you know, like, riding a, riding a, you know, like a slack-tight thing down a, down a, uh, you know, a lava fall. Like, I look at this and I go, man, oh, jeez, bro. There's another fist later, don't worry. But I would like to keep it, because it does save, uh, save my hide when we're going around. Uh... Another cage. Oh, I touched the lava. There goes my hands. Goodbye, hands. I loved you. Rayman in the top left, constantly smirking, taunting me. Look at these little tiny spiders. Look how much damage they do when you touch them. <laughs> it's like, it's like I think I, I breathed. And the pixel went down. Also, I, I, I miss, you know what else is long and large, my Minecraft world? Exactly, exactly. Big, large Minecraft worlds is what makes the world go round. My big, bold Minecraft world. BBMWs. It's all good. Nope, it's not good. It's not good. 
Okay, I I think it's interesting that the lava is just coming out of pipes. Like, I don't think there's actually a volcano here at all. Um, now I just want to know, a room like this really makes me go, hey, yeah, the controls in this game are actually really nice, and they work super well, given that I'm on a keyboard. I only have eight directions. I don't have a walk button. It's like, okay, well, Rayman sort of, like, nudges his way in directions when you tap it, and he sort of turns pretty quickly, like, on the spot. You know, like, there's, there's no, like, you can just, you know, move the camera, you just hold it down, and it rotates around at a pretty quick speed. There's a lot of, like, cool things. Which is, like, how this game works. I don't know. I, I, I'm, gu I'm gushing, but I love it. I love it. Someone's gonna be like, are you the same person from, like, 10 years, 13 years ago? I'm like, uh, potentially. I don't know. I've just hijacked this channel, so. Uh, yeah, so start from the right, you'll get red lums. Get that one, you'll get a, a cage and another power glove. And now you can show the spider who's boss. Because uh, he just takes two two power glove punches. It's great, nice and easy. Uh, I know I'm gonna drop the ball when it comes to this part, so we'll see how I do. But may I also just add, I I remember I, I might as well lose lose my power glove like this. But I remember always like playing around with like diving down and like trying to like go back up, like that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is super cool. I don't have. Crazy amount of willpower to experiment with that, but I always love ha just how the physics of this thing works because, like, like, I don't know, I could have nearly landed back up on that ledge. <laughs> nearly. So, the trick here is uh, you can jump on the shell. Me as a kid, if you go back to those old Rayman Revolution Let's Plays, I remember having a very big freak out moment about jumping on the shell and how nothing in the game tells you. You can jump on the shell. Now, that being said, I have a huge problem trying to do this jump. I don't know what's going wrong. I... <laughs> I've... I, I, I planned this ahead of time, and I'm like, ah, oh, okay. I, 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 know, I know what I'm doing wrong. Actually, I think you just walk it. I'll try just walking it. Um, but I know I did a thing where I did a boost jump. Like, I, I did the, 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 you know, the speed up, and then I jumped. And, uh... Which you can do all of a sudden, by the way. I just want to note. Um, maybe you just walk off. Because there's just lava there. I'm not sure if I'm about to hit that. Yeah, no, I'm about to hit that. Okay. Hmm. Alright, we'll do the boost jump. <laughs> it seemed to work last time, so sure. But yeah, like, I love this loop-de-loop, -loop. I love, like, all these bits you go around. I used to, in that Let's Play, I'd just scream at this part. I was legit, like, vitriolic for no reason, I swear. Because <laughs> this part is like, hey, it's fun. And, like, 30 seconds long, so here's what I do. I do a boost and I jump. And Rayman will just be far enough that he'll naturally jump off. So you don't have to worry. Uh, you do have to shoot the end, but... You're good. If you got 25 lums and 6 uh, cages, you're good. Drop back down here. Okay. We've got a, a log here. Very important. You do not fall- well, yeah, I guess you can fall off, but just don't hit any other checkpoints if you do. And, uh, this is directly above where we entered. I... Really, like, I think at the end I was like, only for 2 lums? Are you kidding me? Completely disregarding that there were four cages on the inside. That is four tenths towards a neck, uh, you know, another increase your health bar. And that was all freebies. None of those cages, you know, in that in that pyramid were actually hard to get. That's the genius. That's, I mean, yeah, it's optional. Yeah, if you really want to get this game over and done with, yeah, okay, sure, you, you went the slower route. But, like, the whole point of an optional bit is to reward you for the optional exploration. And ultimately, that's a rewarding experience, that, that room, that scene. I love how long this first scene is. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the power punch, so that makes this next bit a little bit trickier, but not a lot, but trickier, but just a little bit. Uh, not this bit. Although this guy does try to ruin your day. He's, he's really coming, he's really coming at me.
I like how technically we're still in the first scene. Technically. Uh, and we're already at seven cages. Here we go. Nearly at the end of the first scene. Uh, there is a, um... A biscuit dough hands man following me. And then he tries to, like, hide around the wall if you look. So try to, like, charge a shot and then, like... Yeah, try again with the charge shots. He'll take three charge shots. Uh... Come on, Mike Wazowski. If you've got the power glove, you don't have to worry about charging the shot. You just throw it. He's, he's really zooming when, when you're around the corner. I'm like, okay, hide and go seek. Also, sometimes your shot can land the rebound. Come on, come on, Mike Wazowski. You got this. You could lock on as well. Come on. He's getting stuck on geometry. He doesn't like where I'm sitting. Alright, he's, he's really being temperamental. I think I'm just going to have to get him with a single hit. He's taking preferably. Let me charge up a shot. I love the way he spins. Ooh. And then he turns into a plum? I mean, I guess I would, so... Carry the plum over here. Oops. <laughs> Not too close to the wall. Throw it up, and that will allow you to do a plum jump off it. And here we are, finally, freedom. The end of the level. I love this wonderful kind of canyon side look. We got one lum chilling up there. And then just step on the path and you can go, nah, bait and switch. Emperor's New Groove didn't even do it. I love it if you stand here, the plum comes at you as well, so. Uh, this level is only three scenes, by the way, including the optional one, so. Uh, I used to always think it was a crazy long level, and it's certainly longer. Like, all three of these scenes have a fair bit of content going on, but now we're in, like, you know, the depths. The actual sanctuary itself, because there was pirates and, you know, forts. I guess there was also pirates and forts in the last sanctuary. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, okay. Don't touch the butter lava. You just touch the, you know, the good lava. Oops. Oops. <laughs> The plum lands really close to the camera here. You don't have to be too accurate, it'll land in your hands eventually, but... The worst part is that's like the only lum that's like... ...chilling on a wall like that. I wonder if it's possible to like, l you know, line up this plum such that you never have to like, swing anything. But it works like you expect. You don't have to fight it too much. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. <laughs> All good. Although the camera is on a bit of a weird angle right now. Mmm, I double tapped A real quick, and I'm hoping that I get this. Oh, I might get this. Just need to make sure you get that yellow lum, the five lumma. And then, there you go. There's no lums for a fair bit. Just watch out for these. It makes a weird noise if you get hit by one. Let's see if I can just intentionally get hit. Oops. Hey, see that? He gets dizzy for some reason? You can still attack. You can still do all this stuff while he's getting dizzy. It's just weird. He's just dizzy for a moment. Who knows? There it is again. You're gonna love these, like, vine things. They're all over the place. In, in like, some of the later levels as well. Uh, now this is probably one of, like, the craftiest secrets in the whole game as well. This one, like, I mean, this level's filled with, like, crafty secrets. It's very easy to miss all of these. So, where there's this yellow lum, note that path on the right. Do you see that? Do you just see that? It's just, it's there. It's there if you've never, oh, whoops. But like, yeah, if you've played this game and you've never seen that that pathway is on the on the right there, 
You know, the, I'm about to blow your mind. That was there the entire time. Some guy's gonna be like, how do you see that? And it's like, it's a secret. It's for the astute viewers. You go, ah yes. That's just there. The way the lava is flowing is like, it makes it such an optical illusion as well. You'll never, it's very difficult to catch. Oh, oh, there you go. Where's my boing sound effect? He's <laughs> just jumping on it. There we go. Jump from there, you know, parkour right here. And it works naturally as well. I'm not even gonna grill any of this, but yeah, oh, it's so good. At the top, we have the last cage, as well as five more lums. And you're overlooking where you needed to go, basically right at the end, so that's cool. I love this, you know, massive bit of height. Again, the music changing. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I got nothing else to say other than I love this game. I, I absolutely adore it, and I regret like, being so critical and scathing of, uh, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe the PS2 version deserves it. So I, I highly encourage, if you personally have played the PS2 version and you're wondering what on earth I'm referring to when I keep saying this game is amazing, um, I would definitely just say give the Nintendo 64, the Dreamcast, or the PC version a go. It's, like, it goes dirt cheap on GOG. Uh, big props for it actually being on GOG as well. Very nice. Interestingly, this game, while being released on a bunch of consoles, including the DS and the 3DS in their own weird ways, and iOS, um, it's never gotten, like, a HD port. It's always constantly gotten, like, ports to similar hardware. So there's no, like, tremendously better looking version of this game. Maybe the Dreamcast version, but... I uh, like it's... Generally, most of the same looking version. And honestly, I don't really need it to be better looking. I think it is like on point. I love the colored lighting as well. It's just like, so good. Okay, I real talk. I don't actually know how you're meant to do this. I always do it like this, which is very funky. I will then land on the plum, turn around. I'm now going to throw it up in the air and hit space like the frame before the, the thing comes down. I think this thing just lands on you all the time, so... I think that's intentional. Just gotta be crafty. Just gotta be crafty. I'm gonna send you some, some black snakes, which you can't kill, but... Well, you can't kill, but you can't kill it while holding this. I'm in the room! The music's playing, you can't come at me. Okay, throw the yellow orb on the pedestal. And, uh, this is like a hex in one half of the puzzle has been solved, something like that. Um... But don't worry, it is like a, a pretty linear level, um... But it is like kind of crafty how, you know, it weaves all around. You don't quite know where you're going. You're looking at this going, huh? Okay. So, we'll continue on. There's a bunch of yellow lums, don't worry, we'll be back here, because you saw the blue pyramid. Don't worry, I got this. I got these. Through here, and we're up on this ledge. This ledge was, uh... Sort of at the second fall, so... Come here, get the plum. Uh, we're gonna do a plum jump here as well, just to get... Plum jump here, just to get this lum. Plum for the lum. That's how we do it. Be a little careful because there's a pit right there. I guess this level is maybe a bit confusing because, like, you know, the the door rotates and it's not immediately obvious that like that's a different doorway that that's about to go to. Especially because you're not really in control of like where it's tilting. It just kind of leans you there. All right, this is one of like the cheekiest moments in the game where it's like, okay. There's a wall you gotta break, and in order to break the wall, you gotta basically push yourself backwards. I always found that's such a cheeky moment. It's great, I love it. Okay. Time for... One more slide, why not? 
Oh, I love when the music steps up. Uh, there is a singular yellow lum, uh, I think, immediately after this turn. You'll see it, but you don't want to miss it. Yeah, there it is. And then I love how, you know, <laughs> that's not the, you got a relay purple lum thing going on. That purple lum is still going. Whoa, whoa. There we go, we're good. Into the pit. And if you did that all right, you got the purple lum now appearing at the end here, allowing you to swing your way back up. Uh, but also, yeah, two yellow lums accessible, so I'll put you at 49. This level, <laughs> just, I, I don't know, me as a kid, I'm going to get very angry at every single thing that I'm saying now. If I had a time machine, I could see what I was saying now, I'd be like, oh my gosh, you're such an idiot. I should really look back, like, what were the exact things I was criticizing, but I swear, like, you know, I now know there's like the back of my hand, and I'm just like, what exactly? Oh, we got a boss! It's the Guardian of the Sanctuary of the Stone and Fire, Umber. Here he comes, very menacing with his menacing teeth. Alright, here comes a boss that's <laughs> even harder than the last one. You jump on top of his head, and he's gonna, you know, rumble forward. While also slowly descending into the lava. It is your goal. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? It is your goal to jump off. There you go, great boss. Now, the real boss is walking too far forward. You gotta keep your eyes peeled. That red lump right there is going, huh. And there you go, there's a yellow lump right there. That's that's your cheeky last yellow lump. Cause you'll see where the cutscene starts. Basically, as soon as you touch the slope. You gotta be super careful about that one because you get through this whole level, you don't wanna replay that again. Bit of electricity. It's always gonna mean something good. It just means, I guess, like you're positively or negatively charged. Maybe, 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 uh, Umber was rubbing his feet against the ground and building up static electricity and he all buzzed it off while touching this metal totem. And then he's been eaten by the spirit. Again, pizzazz. Look at this guy right here. But yeah, whatever I considered that as being the most annoying level in the game, I don't know. I had a swell time. I had a good time. I, it, there's, there's so many tells, and I think as a kid, I just am not aware of what the tells are. And I guess that's the thing, is that when you're young, do you necessarily know what you should be looking for? Who knows? You know, after playing like bajillions of games, oh yeah, it's super obvious. Alright, one last bonus level to annoy my sister while she's sleeping in the other room. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my gosh, it's a different pathway. How long is this one gonna be? Is this gonna be one of the 30 second ones? Here we go. Like, look at that, he doesn't even go straight. And he's gotta swim. He takes a sweet time. This actually might be one of the longer ones. And then it's just like watching that pirate try to go up the up the slope. Thirty-three seconds. They're getting longer. They're getting longer. Very nice. Uh, annoy your sister. Yes. <laughs> it's it's ten fifty-three p.m. and she likes waking up early. Oh my gosh! Look at that. They've given me the lo the wonderful power punch. I knew it was worth it. Yeah. So, we'll save- I don't know why the background doesn't render after this level in particular. Just very curious. Uh, so yeah, but that is indeed half the game. Uh, we've got half of the- the lums in the game, half- basically half of the cages. So I think that is a perfect place to call it for the stream. 
uh, and we can resume and basically beat the game next next week on stream. So until then, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this or you uh, want to see more, I guess, alerts that I'm here next week, uh, you know, the, the stream time is 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard on Mondays, so I'll be here next week. It's all good. If you miss parts of this, the VOD will be on YouTube soon. Uh, keep your eyes out on YouTube as well for that PC build video. It might be out this week, it might be out next week. I'll try my best. It's certainly not going to take all month. But, yeah. I don't have a date. But it will be on YouTube. So if you're on Twitch, it's going to be on YouTube. Uh, and I'll poke... I'm on the Fetty. I have m.bnl.com. You can follow me there for updates or other kinds of things around that. Uh, I'll also let you know what keeps happening to those hard drives, because... Uh, yeah, what a shame. What a shame that two were broken, but hey, you know, the project works. I got a thing. I'm happy. So, have a good one, everyone. Stay, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. I don't know where I'm going there. Eat your greens. See ya.